Well, I'm welcoming here everyone. I'm just waiting for more people to join in. A good afternoon to all of you. And some of them I can see that uh, are joining from uh, UK and different uh, location of locations. Uh, good morning to them. Good afternoon to the South Asian uh, attendees. Thank you and welcome to Mark Andy and FIG webinar for digital solutions. I strongly hope that you and your family is doing well and keeping healthy in this time. We, FIG and Mark Andy, had been serving with our services and products since last 20 years in this part of the world. We have been focusing these years mainly on Mark Andy flexographic converting systems and Rotoflex finishing solutions. I can see the world is changing. Since last eight to nine years, Mark Andy started offering various digital solutions and have several installations all over the world already. It's my great pleasure to present you the solution. Thank you again. I will allow Ms. Lena, uh, who is uh, currently present in this webinar, she is the marketing head for Mark Andy based in Europe, to take the webinar forward. Lena, thank you very much, and you please proceed further. Thank you. Thank you, Gaurav. Welcome, everyone, on the first Mark Andy webinar dedicated for your region. Thank you, Gaurav, for inspiration for this meeting. Uh, my name is Lena Chmielewska Bontron. I am responsible for marketing in Europe and I am so glad that I can open this webinar for you today. So now I would like to introduce to you my colleagues who will make a presentation for you. Uh, so today we have uh, special guests from Mark and the UK, Sid Roberts, one of the most experienced uh, person um, in digital printing industry. Uh, support, sits, supports us uh, and our customers in any calculations for digital jobs. So feel free to ask him any questions um, during the presentation and after. And Phil Baldwin, uh, our European uh, sales manager with more than 20 years experiences uh, in narrow to mid-web market. Um, so I'm sure that Phil will share with you a lot of technical details during the presentation. So again, feel free to ask him any questions about the technology. And now I think that we can start uh, our presentation. So enjoy the presentation and um, Phil, now is your time. So please start your presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Lana. Um, Good morning, or well, good afternoon to most of you. Um, let me just share my screen with you all. Okay, so hopefully the presentation is uh, clear to you all. Um, Lena mentioned questions, but due to the number of questions we'll probably receive, we've set up a dedicated email address so if you could all take note of the email address when I put this up on the screen, if you can send your questions to that, we'll be able to come back to you and answer them personally on a one-to-one -one basis and in more depth over the coming few days or coming week. Um, so, just a, a quick overview for uh, you all regarding Mark Andy and numbers. So Mark Andy started in 1946 by Mark Andrews. That's where the name comes from and the name we still remain with to this day. He started building in Kirkwood in Missouri. Mark Andy is still based in St. Louis in Missouri, but now in a much larger facility, obviously. Um, globally, we have more than nine and a half thousand machines installed. This is all the way from the 830s up to the modern evolutions and digital series. We employ directly more than 80 technicians for our equipment. Globally, we have a 70% uh, share within the US and Canadian market. We have a 35% worldwide market share. There's more than 60 dealers to help support customers worldwide. 
and Mark Andy employs more than 400 direct employees, and that's without including obviously all the contractors. So an overview of the Mark Andy portfolio. So Mark Andy isn't only a machine manufacturer. We don't just supply the printing presses. We, we like to be known as a total solutions partner. So this means we can supply you with the printing machine, the finishing machine, and the consumables you need uh, to help support your business. So obviously Mark Andy, as mentioned, is the narrow web business, um, or it's narrow to mid web, as the presses now go up to 600, and 60 millimeters. There's a lot of growth within this mid web market for labels and flexible packaging. We have Mark Andy print products, which is a huge supply chain. Everything from Tessa tape, uh, your DuPont plate making equipment, Dr. Blades, ink, all the resources you need uh, to help your company. Again, it makes Mark Andy a single source supplier. We also own Rotaflex, who is one of the world's leaders in slitter rewinders. They also have the world's largest installed base of slitting uh, and finishing machines. We own what was formerly PressTech. This is your DI, so this is a, a sheet fed DI um, uh, offset press. And then Kluge, who some of you may know, um, mainly in the hot stamping business. So the Mark Andy corporate vision statement, it's Mark Andy, our aim is to ensure that our customers enjoy doing business with us to make an enjoyable experience and to continue with us for the future because we understand for long term business, you need to have that partnership. It's not just selling you a machine and then moving to the next customer. Um, we also will provide solutions throughout the life cycle of the product. So if you look at items like the legacy machines, uh, Mark Andy 830, we can still support those, we can still supply parts. Mark Andy actually manufactures probably more than 70% of the parts we use. So whether your machine is one years old or whether it's 30 years old, we can still help support you. Some of our, this, these are direct Mark Andy offices. Um, so St. Louis, Missouri, this is our head office. This is sales service support uh, parts and where we actually manufacture the machines this is the building in st louis so we actually build in house we don't have parts assembled we're not just an assembly line we actually mill and machine the frames and then we build the complete presses before they're shipped out uh, around the world chicago is our mark andy print products head office so this is a huge warehouse where we pick and pack all the consumables in San Diego, this is our digital R&D facility. Now, people still tend to view Mark Andy as a, a Flexo manufacturer. We've actually been in digital since September the 3rd, 2012. So for more than eight years or eight years now, we've been working on developing digital inkjet systems. Um, Macclesfield, UK, uh, the office I'm currently in at the moment. So this is a demo center service support and the European hub for Mark Andy print products. And then in Warsaw, Poland, where Lena's currently uh, based, this is our European demo center. It's a large facility where you can see digital, flexo, you can either visit or we can run remote demos uh, due to the current times or to save you traveling. We also have service sales and support from that office. So, a quick overview of Flexo Image Graphics. Um, I'll present this for Gaurav. So they were incorporated in 2000 with its first office in Delhi. Um, figure one of the biggest, if not the biggest, uh, service provider for Flexo presses and the associated equipment. Uh, they have three offices throughout India, one in Delhi, one in Chennai, and one in Mumbai. Um, and then they also have an office in Dubai to cover those areas. They have a team of more than 30 personnel uh, located throughout these departments and locations. So their service approach, they have a strong commitment to providing expert solutions. Uh, FIG will offer you a fully integrated service approach to fit the requirements of their customers. So all the FIG engineers are fully trained up to some of the highest levels uh, Mark Andy provides. 
So they're what we would call a direct line service support. So they're as, as qualified as the actual direct Mark Andy employees. So they can provide direct or real time help and support for you guys. And they have the full support of the Mark Andy offices, whether it's in the UK support or for the American uh, US office. So an idea of their numbers. So in North India, there's 66, 45 in West India, 46 in South India, seven in East India, 17 in Sri Lanka, 19 in the Gulf regions, eight in Pakistan, seven in Africa, two in Bangladesh, and three in other areas. Um, to give you an idea of the installations of the machines, so these are quite impressive numbers for, for the time we've been working with FIG and they continue to grow. There's 264 Mark Andy presses, 104 Rotaflex machines, 27 of the Kluge, three of the Prestec, and 69 of the other machines, which include the likes of Arpico, the Comcos, Icons, uh, Stanford presses, and so on. So quite a good install base. So if any of you have any questions, um, so we don't sort of interrupt the flow of the presentation, um, if you could send them to digital webinar at markandy.com, we will be able to show this again at the end, but it's digital webinar at markandy.com. And then we'll have one of our experts, most likely Sid, will be able to help answer the questions and we can return to you directly. At the end of the presentation, um, we have a video and following that, we're actually gonna answer some of the questions we have or some of the more common, most common uh, questions. So Sid will be on hand to answer those. So technology fit, um, digital hybrid. This is to give you an idea of a scale of the products Mark Andy can offer. So down here for your, what we would call micro runs, uh, micro to short run. So anything from one meter up to round about 1000 linear meters. We have a Mark Andy Digital Pro. Um, anything from, again, one meter up into five and a half, six thousand meters on average, or depending on your ink coverage, it could be unlimited. We have the Digital Series HD. And then for your larger, lower margin, but high volume jobs, we can offer the Evolution which is a full servo press in 13 and 17 inch widths, or we can offer the performance series, which is available from 13 inch up to 26 inch. So 330 millimeters up to 660 millimeters. So it shows we can help you whether you need to achieve the very short runs profitably or the very long runs profitably. Um, within our digital portfolio, the core business is the Digital Pro. This is available in roll to roll or up to a hybrid with two flexos and semi rotary die cut. It's a toner based, a four color toner based machine. We have the Digital Series HD, which I'll cover in more details in a moment. And then the Digital Plus screen. Now, this is designed as a silk screen replacement. It can attach to any machine, it doesn't have to be a Mark Andy press, and it allows you to to do digital screen. So eliminates the need for a rotary screen. So true hybrid technology. So to explain some of this, it's simplicity. The integrity, oh, sorry, I can't speak today. Integrated controls through the true hybrid platform provide a superior use of experience and consistent reliability. So to expand on that a little, what, how we mean by true hybrid, it's a single source supplier. So Mark Andy manufacture the whole machine from the unwind to the digital to the rewind. We're not reliant on an OEM, a, a third party partnership. The problem with some of these partnerships as you may have seen in the past is you have the inkjet supplier and then the flexo supplier. Now when that partnership ends, you actually end up with a redundant machine, a machine which is no longer supported. If you go with Mark Andy, obviously with any changes or future upgrades, we can support you through the whole life cycle of the press. Flexibility. 
So near infinite customization for profitability. What this means is you could start with a four or five color roll to roll. If you then needed flexo, we could add flexo. If you then needed die cut because you find you're crashing your offline finishing, we can add die stations. If you need cold foil, if you need hot foil. So it just shows by working with Mark Andy on a flexible uh, platform, we can build your business as your business grows. You don't have to start with the top end. You could start with low end or you could start in the middle. Profitability, so best in class ergonomic model to propel your business forward and support. So we have a comprehensive training, including sales, service and operation. So unlike a flexo press, which is normally a two week installation and training, the digital is ongoing. So we can train you before the machine arrives. We train you once the machines arrive. We train you on the pre-press. We train you on the operation. So it's a long ongoing partnership you enter to with Mark Andy. Give you an idea of some configurations. So you could start with this top one, as I mentioned, you could start with a five color roll to roll. Um, we can also then offer you an optional offline finishing equipment with flexo and die stations. You could go for mid market. So this press is a five color or it could be an eight color. You could select one flexo or two flexos. Again, uh, roll to roll, but here we have a single die station. Or if you have high volume work and you're running not only short work, but medium to even long run jobs, we can look at the full hybrid, which is up to eight colors. You can have as many flexos as you'd like, a semi-rotary inline die cut. We have software packages for high speed ver uh, variable data and versioning. So you can see the operations or the selections are endless really. So just to talk you through the machine and you'll be able to see a similar press to this on the video. You can have an unwind, Corona and web treater as standard, a flexo station for decoration or inline priming if you wish, but with inkjet priming is actually quite rare or it's only, it's, it's substrate dependent. So on say plastics like Lamy tubes. The digital inkjet module, you see now we have the arch, Again, you could have flexo for lamination, for foil. Uh, the inspection systems, your control panels. Here is a QCDC, that can be full rotary or semi-rotary depending on your need. Matrix removal, and then your rewind unit. So just to go over some of the items you can have on the digital series, this is available as 330 mil or 430 mil. So it's available in two different widths. It has mentioned this mod modular. Um, each station here for your flexor 26 inches. So if you want to add another flexo, we just add a 26 inch module. It can be a five or eight color digital module. You can also select four and seven colors or you could select six colors. It's entirely up to you what suits your business and what suits your business portfolio. We have an in enhanced vision system capability. There's error correction and defect tracking. There's an automated head cleaning option rather than manually cleaning. Um, it's based on the new performance series base and with the arch. We now have front field bulk storage, which I can show you on the video. You have a rail mounted. Now this is a nice option. Our rail traverses the whole length of the press. When you have an OEM box in the middle with a third party flexo either side, if you wanted say cold foil first and last, you would need two units. The way we've designed the machine, we've incorporated everything so all the rail options can traverse the full length of the press. Semi-rotary is also an option. Um, we use a 2.5 picoliter drop weight. You have obviously the extent, extended gamut if you want to add the orange, the violet or the green, or you can add all three. Something we use, which is uh, quite unique, is pinning. Now this is the pre-curing for quality and speed. We use pinning after every single color. Most manufacturers will either have final pinning or pinning after the white, and then at the end of the CMYK or CMYK OV. So Mark Andy used pinning after every single color so we can form that dot nicely. It means we have a very high resolution image 
and you can run at quite high speeds compared to other suppliers. Um, there's no limitations really. You can run unsupported film. Uh, shrink film is becoming quite popular. We have a number of these machines in the field now running short run shrink. We've developed a special system for this. We optimized our inks for shrink film and we've developed a special primer which enables the film to shrink without the inkjet ink cracking or coming loose from the substrate. Um, we use a high yield ink, so we actually use quite a special formulated ink which gives high scuff resistance. The multi-page PDF and VDP, we developed that with global graphics software so we can offer some of the fastest uh, VDP processing on the market. And we have chilled servo pacing and UV curing support. So we use um, a system called a ProDot. It's uh, ink ejectors on the Rico heads. It enables us to push a very high viscosity ink through the heads. So it's the piezo plunger ejection technology. So as mentioned, it enables us to use a high viscosity ink. I'll cover the ink on the next slide um, in more details. Uh, we also have a stainless steel internals and heads over the print heads, the digital print heads. This is quite good because if you have a manufacturer's join or, or something goes through and you crash those heads, it's going to cost you a lot of money. These stainless steel give you that extra protection. It, it protects the head from any unwanted damage. Um, the machines are fitted with splice detectors, so if a splice is detected, it will uh, dock the table and protect the head, but there could be some contamination which has fallen on the web. So, going to the ink, so our ink is actually specially formulated for the digital series HD. It's formulated to run through the heads we use. It's a high yield due to the pigment load. Um, Using the piezo plunger, it means we can use an eight centipoise ink, so an eight CP ink, compared to on other heads having to use a six CP ink. Now, when you go down to a six CP ink over an eight CP ink, you have to make a sacrifice. You cannot carry the load we can carry. By carrying that extra load, that extra 20 or 30% of ingredients, extra monomers, olimers, pigments, um, photo initiators, it means we have an optimized ink for labels or for film. So we can run at higher speed with higher density. What it means is also on some of your jobs, you can apply uh, opacity masks 20 or 30%. So you actually uh, can use 20 or 30% less of the ink whilst maintaining the benefits of scuff and high adhesion. So a nice system Mark Andy has is called nozzle correction. Now we use an AVT system which will detect when a nozzle is blocked or not firing or misfiring. So any head, it's regardless of any head manufacturer in inkjet, you will always have nozzle outs. Some of the heads actually come with a label on this saying this head will contain nozzle outs. It's very standard, it's um, part and parcel of inkjet printing. Now this top line is a healthy head. You can see the drops. A nozzle out is basically the nozzle is not firing or it's misfiring. So you end up with a line. These are the lines you can see within the print. On the other, uh, on other machines you will see, they either have no nozzle correction. So you either have to try and clean and flush the head or you have to just accept uh, visible lines or they use an electronic adjustment. So the two heads either side, the, or sorry, the two ejectors either side, they send an extra voltage and it makes two larger dots. So it will cover the line, but you will end up now with a dark line. So it's, it's two evils. Do you have a white line or do you have a darker line? Through the technology Mark Andy uses and with the staged heads, when the system detects one of the heads isn't firing or misfiring, the next line along will fire twice. So we actually have compensation or correction. So we're not going to end up, if we go to this slide, it gives you a better idea. Here you have the nozzle out. This would be compensation. 
Mark Andy used nozzle replacement. So the next line of nozzles will fire twice. So you end up with a perfect image without lines and without a dark line. So you can see you're back to the original image. Quick run through of some of the options on the digital series, and this is only a few of them because the options are any option that you can put on a flexo machine we can include within the digital series. So flexo stations, lamination, top coating, varnish, hot foil, cold foil, rotary screen, embossing, quick change die cut. We can run folding for cartons, shingle conveyor for cartons, slitting and scoring uh, for tickets, for example. You can have single or dual rewinds, a web turn bar, or even a reversing print station. Uh, example, Disto Run for holographic foil from Kurtz. You can have flatbed stamping, embossing, any of the options available on Flexo you can add to our machine. So just a quick overview now on the Digital Pro before we head towards the video of the actual digital series. The Digital Pro, this is the sort of entry level as you wish or a lower cost digital if you're only entering the digital market or want to try the digital market without the larger cost of commercial inkjet the digital pro is the ideal machine for you it's available as roll to roll or up to a full hybrid it runs at 24 23.4 meters per minute you'll find against uh, a legacy or a flexo machine on the micro to mid run jobs it'll be much more profitable um, a low cost to print of 35 cents per square meter. It's probably actually a bit lower than that now, I believe. Um, and then a flexible clear upgrade path. So again, you can start with a roll to roll and then you can have flex and die cutting as, as it moves on. The way we integrate the machine, here's the digital engine here. Now, as the digital engine, as we all know, every couple of years, the digital changes. As this changes, we can upgrade you. So we've designed the machine to be future-proof. If a new faster engine comes out, we can change the engine for you at a lower cost. You're not gonna be buying a whole new machine. We just changed the digital engine here. This particular machine is a Digital Pro 3. So we have the Unwind web cleaner. There's a web guide, digital engine. Um, it has a closed loop tension control throughout the digital. This is a dry toner. We have flexo, you can have lamination, cold foil, or just matte varnish, gloss varnish. We have a dye station from a Rotoflex DSI. It's a solid proven technology. And then Rotoflex litting. The dye station is taken from our Mark Andy 2200. So again, very solid proven technology. It means you can unwind, print, varnish, die cut, and then finished product ready for the customer. Um, so it's a CMYK four color EP toner machine. On the Digital Pro series, we can also reinsert. So you can do second pass, or you could print say a Flexo white on one of your Flexo machines, put it onto the Digital Pro, run it through on clear material and do second pass. Or if you wish, we can actually add a Flexo station before the digital, to enable you to do this in line. Um, it's a 1200 by 1200 DPI, so photographic resolution. It has the digital print repeat, can run from 178 millimeters up to almost 1.2 meters in banner mode. The flexo station runs from seven inch up to 18 inch. The die repeat in full rotary is 8.5 to 18 inches or in semi-rotary, we can run from four and a half to 18 inches, which is 114 millimeters to 457 millimeters. Um, your materials, you're only really limited by the heat of the fuser. Um, the standard papers, polypropylenes, uh, unsupported paper, stags, tags, stock and board. We can send you a list if you're interested, we can send you the whole list of the uh, possible medias as well. Um, material widths from 7 to 13 inches. The print width, the maximum digital is 12.5 inches, which is 318 millimeters, and the maximum flexo will be 330 millimeters. So, power requirements 
It's a 200 to 240 volt single phase or with the semi-rotary die station due to the accumulator, it's a three phase 30 amp. You require 100 PSI at two cubic feet per minute air supply. The drying is achieved by an air cooled UV, which is on board. Um, the options are, as I mentioned, uh, die station, semi-rotary die station, additional print station. We can also now offer sheeter, conveyor and stackers. The environment, the only real requirements for the materials is 40 to 60% is the ideal uh, relative humidity. So this was a brief overview of it. If you have any questions, not just relating to <laughs> The machines, if you ha have any more questions on the inks, the process, the substrates, please email it to the digital webinar at markandy.com and we will be happy to come back and answer you in the next days. Okay, so I'm just going to start the video, so I just need to swap screens now. So hopefully the video is showing now. Can you see this okay, Lana? Here we have a double-sided Technic cleaner and then a first Flexo station. Now it's quite popular to have the Flexo station first for cold foil so you can run embellishments. Um, the digital ink takes quite well to the cold foil so you can have a multi-spectrum of colours or metallic colours. Here you see we have the Flexo station, the cold foil nip roll and then a cold foil unwind and rewind. It looks like they're applying a bronze foil. The foil will be from Kurtz. This is the digital arch. So first of all here, you can see this is the front. So by having the ink tank here at the front, it means you're not having to go behind the machine and fill up what we call an island. So you don't have this separate standalone island at the back of the press now, it's all on board. You can fill the machine whilst you're running. We have a special uh, ink delivery nozzle. Here you can see the rail traversing the whole of the press. And at the end, we have what is known as a CT laminator. This is a constant tension laminator. So it means you can run down to 12 micron films. And then afterwards, we have two additional flexo stations 
So that's the CT laminator I was mentioning. You could also take a standard laminator. So here you can see the Flexo station. These are 24 inch chilled impression drums, which are very good for web transport. You have the smart Dr. Blade system. And then each print station here is a 26 inch module. Here's your six sensor for your auto register. One key thing to point out as well is because the digital side and the flexo side are all from one manufacturer, they're all from Mark Andy. It means the controls, the communication is done from one system. So every second is about 2000 lines of code communicating with each other. When you take two suppliers, so you have an OEM engine and an OEM flexor around it, one of the issues you'll have is integration. So you have two separate systems trying to communicate with each other, normally integrated with encoders. So there will always be a slight delay. With us, it's a single platform and a single line of communication. The screens you see here, we have the press interface, we have the digital interface, and then this is just from our BST viewing camera. These are the carts for the quick change unit. So you, have, you can have your magnetic dies ready and mounted offline. This is the quick change die station. So it's like a vertical die station we've put on the side. So you side load. It means a, a die change has gone from 10, 12 minutes to probably 30 seconds. So you'll see this first job is ready to run. Here we have the exit pacing. So this is a closed loop system, so full servo. It means the web tension, that's the other nice thing, it's one system again. So from the unwind through the digital to the rewind, it's closed loop servo controlled by one machine and one system. Again, if you integrate uh, digital into another press manufacturer, you tend to see their own separate unwind and rewind still with the machine. Okay, so here on the screen, you can't really see, but this is what we call the job queue. So all the jobs from your pre-press can be sent over to the machine and queued up ready to run one after the other. So you could run your jobs back to back. So here we're running in semi-rotary die cut mode. And there's the exit pacing. So you see here, this is your register screen to show you the digital and your flexo. Here Lucas is just changing the speed of the whole press. So on this particular job, it's a clear on clear substrate on a probably a 20 micron PET liner. We're running cold foil first, digital over the cold foil and the digital white. Mark Andy actually offered the highest opacity white on the market at the highest speed. So Lucas has now stopped. He's gonna make a job change. You can see here he's dropping in a varnish sleeve, a tint sleeve. And this is the QCDC. So this will be nice to watch. You open the side hatch. He's going to bring out the semi-rotary die. So he removes the previous die plate. And then in the cylinder goes again. So in well under a minute, the whole process is complete with the die change. If you're running in full rotary, you could have removed that actual magnetic cylinder and then just loaded the next one straight away so it'd be even quicker. He simply closes the hatch, locks the safety guard, and the die will come up into position. 
Here he's just telling the machine the repeat size. So we know the new repeat. So the next job from the digital side will already be loaded over to the press. So when Lucas is ready, he'll just tell the machine to run, select the job and tell the machine to run. Here he's just releasing the pressure of the nip roll, the cold foil. So you can see every print station has its own independent controls. So now Lucas selects the next digital job and he'll tell the digital to print. So if you already own a performance series, all the tooling, of course, is interchangeable between your FlexoPress and the digital. The print stations are exactly the same. And then there's the next job. So again, a high opacity white, and then CMYK orange and violet. We're currently using a matte varnish. So here you can see the web advance and retard, advance and retard. So this is the semi rotary. Um, it's quite nice to see it at slow speed so you can understand how it works. Using the auto register, the die will come into register and then stay in register to the print throughout the run. So you can see the whole design of the platform. It's a very ergonomic height. So there's not, Lucas isn't having to lift up very high. He's not having to get down on his hands and knees. So it's a very comfortable ergonomic position for the printer. So he's taken the waist up now. Here, this is a standard vertical uh, waist wind up. We can also offer the advanced waist wind up, which is a zero gap or fixed gap option. For the rewind, you can have the option of cantilevered or dual frame. So if you're running shrink films, if you're running a 17 inch, you may wish to look at running a dual frame, which has its two arms and the roll lift. So you see very simple operator. Uh, operator use. Lucas there he was just stopping the job again so he'll make another job change. This I believe will be the last job change. So within here you have slitting so you can have standard uh, rotary blades, you could have razor blades or you could have more advanced rotary razors from Tidland, if you're running uh, films, if you're running board, we can attach a conveyor here, a shingle conveyor or a standard collection conveyor. If you're running metal to metal for short run packaging, such as pharmaceuticals or cigarettes. Um, they're quite some interesting markets, promotional items such as cigarette packets. Um, we'd like today's news, say the local well, one of the football teams has just won one of the leagues. Um, you can run lots of promotional work. 
So Lucas has just inserted the flexo cylinder there. You can see there's no intrusive garden. The print station is fully CE compliant due to uh, finger points and nick points. But it does mean you can ex you can change your printing plates extremely quickly and at a nice working height. So here Lucas is just taking off the clear on clear and switching to a white paper, pressure sensitive paper. So this rewind is a, a simple standard roll lift cantilevered rewind. If you again, if you're going 17 inch or film, you can look at the option of a dual frame on mine. This little black box here, I'm not sure if you can all see it, but this will light up, it'll give you an early warning and then a warning when your ink is running low. One of the nice features with the front fill tank is you can lift up and then attach the ink container straight from the ink container and just leave it to fill at its own leisure whilst you're running the machine. So this press is a, this is actually a seven color uh, inkjet. We have three flexos, semi-rotary die station. The overall length is probably a bit shorter than a standard eight color flexo press. So when this splice goes through, the print heads will move so the web can safely pass through the arch with no risk of damaging the print heads. So this job, it looks like he's running a uh, press sensitive white paper. Here, there's the next job he has selected. He has a UV flexo gold stain with the matte varnish. So on his operator screen here, he's told the digital that he's changed the repeat size for the flexo, the media. So he's changed from a clear on clear to a paper because we will profile all your medias to set your profiles. The auto register will put the flexo to the digital and then keep the two together throughout the run. So he's just bringing the join through here. So you can see it's a very comfortable working height for the operator. We're just waiting for the material. The material has come through. The digital is just coming through now. So Lucas here, he will teach the sensor. He uses the pre-register function, which puts the flexo in register with the digital. And now the auto registration takes over. So he's just moving his touchscreen camera here to view the registration to make sure the flexo and the digital are working together. Here, here you can see the blue glow. Now this is the interpinning, which enables us to run high speed with high quality. So again, he's running now on the paper job. So it's only really a short overview here um, and hopefully a, a brief description of the machine so you could see it running live. Um, as mentioned, if any of you require a demo, we can run them live within Warsaw or we can run you a live stream from one of our demo centers around the world. We can also arrange customer visits so you don't have to just see the machines within sterile um, environments. So here we're actually running a flexo first. So we're running a flexo down first. We're running a digital, a flexo afterwards, and then a matte varnish. Okay, so that's the end of the video. Thank you for your patience. I'm, I'm sure you're probably all... Um, tired of listening to my voice so I'll probably take a break now um, pass over to Gaurav if he'd like to make some comments or if he has some questions that we've taken you'd like to ask to Sid well, one of the one things of the with, uh, 
you know, I could see that some of the questions which are coming in, and I'm sure uh, there will be more questions coming uh, through the email. The common ones uh, is one of the question I can see here is that uh, why hybrid over roll to roll? That's that's a very common question uh, which a converter always debates uh, before he take a decision that should he go for just a roll to roll machine or uh, he should start thinking about a, a hybrid class. Of course, uh, Sid, uh, you are an expert. Maybe if you can add in and you can give your uh, comments about this question. Okay, uh, thanks, uh, Gurav. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, th thanks for joining. <coughs> so, uh, <coughs> why hybrid over roll to roll? <coughs> it's a very good question. Uh, I think, firstly, uh, we must differentiate between uh, what we mean by hybrid and actually full inline converting. Uh, as we know, <coughs> digital label printing has been available now for over 20 years. Uh, and during this time, I think the majority of installed machines, more than 90% have been roll to roll with offline or near line uh, converting. Uh, the reason for this was initially uh, because of the limitation in digital press speeds. Uh, back in the early 2000s, uh, the machines were running at less than 10 meters a minute, seven and a half meters a minute. Uh, this eventually increased to 15 meters a minute around about 2003. And again, uh, HP Indigo doubled that speed uh, to 30 meters a minute uh, in 2008. Uh, uh, because of the speed uh, and the economic crossover uh, between digital and flexo, it was only profitable to do run lengths really below a thousand meters initially. Uh, the increase in demand for short run work uh, meant that a digital press uh, could easily print 10, 15 jobs or even more uh, per shift. So to finish that volume of jobs in line would have meant that the majority of the available shift hours on a digital press would be taken up with the finishing setups and not actually printing and therefore making money. So it made economic sense uh, to convert those jobs offline at a much faster speed and on a finishing line that had a much lower hourly rate. Uh, also, a single finishing line could easily handle a volume of two or three digital presses. It was only when the digital press speeds reached 30 meters a minute and longer run lengths of 2,000 meters could be economic uh, but, uh, versus flexo, did finishing in line begin to make some sense. However, I have to say, this still depended on the average job lengths that a particular customer was, do was doing. <clears throat> Jobs over 1,500 meters could easily be finished in line. Uh, and in fact, some uh, customers, you know, they built in the option <clears throat> on their digital presses uh, and their inline finishing uh, to be able to print roll to roll or in line uh, depending on the type of job. So they had the best of both worlds. For the very short runs, they could print, uh, uh, they could print roll to roll and finish offline. Uh, uh, but for the longer runs, say above 1500 meters, it made sense to finish the job uh, in one pass. Now, since the rise of inkjet label printing, Press speeds have been at a minimum 50 meters a minute or now uh, up to 70 meters a minute and beyond. Uh, you've seen Phil was talking about the Mark Andy digital series HD. That prints at 73 meters a minute with up to eight colors, including white uh, and doesn't slow down. So at this speed, the economic crossover with Flexo would increase to 4,000 meters and beyond, obviously depending on the region. Uh, this means that much longer, uh, a much larger amount of available jobs can be printed digitally. So today, inline converting uh, makes a lot of economic and time-saving sense. Hence the option on most roll-to-roll -roll presses uh, to have an interface into a third-party converting line. So why now hybrid? Well, a true hybrid press is one that is supplied by a single manufacturer. Phil was talking about the benefits of the digital series HD. 
And that manufacturer, we, we have control over the entire press from unwind to digital module to flexo printing to full inline converting, uh, including embellishments uh, to rewind. Uh, other hybrid presses still rely on an interface uh, to a third party uh, to supply either the digital module or the flexo and, com uh, and converting line. So the demand today for digital label printing is increasing year on year. And also, so is the complexity of the finished labels. We're seeing this everywhere. It is now no longer possible to print jobs entirely using just one process, even digital. To print digitally, roll to roll, and then to finish on a sophisticated and expensive converting line, to me, makes no economic sense and also makes the job preparation more difficult. So hybrid label printing, uh, therefore, is becoming increasingly interesting to many converters who've experienced digital roll-to-roll -roll presses or are making their first move into digital. Thank you, Sid. Thank you very much for a detailed okay. explanation. I'm sure uh, you know, we can supply the answer uh, directly uh, to everyone who are attendees here. Uh, the second question which I can see which is coming up is that uh, what is the reason, I mean, how to differentiate or why somebody will be going for the inkjet over toner? What's the advantage or disadvantage we are talking about? Uh, yep, again, uh, another uh, good question. So why inkjet over toner? Well, <clears throat> the first and most obvious answer is production speed. Uh, the main limitation uh, with toner-based presses is the technology uh, that's reached its peak of its speed. And it can only be overcome by adding additional print engines at substantial cost and also technical difficulty. Uh, most today, most toner-based presses uh, can't print CMYK plus orange and violet above 30 meters a minute. So if we look at the HP Indigos out there and the Zycon presses, they're limited to 30 meters a minute. They can only overcome it by adding print engines, uh, increasing the complexity and increasing the, uh, the cost of ownership. Uh, with the addition of white ink uh, to achieve opacity, uh, existing toner-based uh, presses may even slow down to as little as 20 meters a minute. So with inkjet, uh, the, the current minimum production speeds, as I've said previously, around about 50 meters a minute for most manufacturers for CMYK uh, plus orange, violet, green, uh, and also including white at a, a pretty good high opacity. So the obvious answer there straight away is production speed. Uh, some manufacturers, uh, such as Mark Andy, we can print at 73 meters a minute up to 78 meters a minute. So therefore, the, the economic crossover now with Flexo, again, is 4,000 meters and beyond. So this really makes inkjet very interesting to be capable of printing a large volume of label jobs. So that's the first answer, uh, I think, speed, uh, given the extra productivity. Second answer, I would say, is probably ease of use and reliability. Uh, inkjet is a non-contact process. It has less working parts than most toner-based technologies. The presses are easier to maintain uh, and expert operators who need to be trained to almost service engineer levels are just not required uh, with inkjet. Uh, the new generation of true hybrid presses uh, are built to the same standards and beyond as flexo machines and using the same web transport systems. Uh, We've seen that with the Mark Andy Digital Series HD. They really are 24-7 machines that can produce high volumes of fully finished digital uh, or digital plus flexo work. So ease of use and reliability uh, would be my second answer. Uh, the third answer is that inkjet has many positive attributes uh, that are required in uh, normal uh, label production. Uh, it normally doesn't require any pre-treated pre materials, sorry, uh, that do add cost. You can print onto standard label stocks. Uh, on some toner-based machines, uh, it's almost mandatory to print on qualified pre-treated pre materials. UV inkjet has excellent uh, adhesion, uh, scratch and rub resistance. 
Uh, with most toner-based technology, you need to use a varnish or a laminate to protect the print uh, before you deliver the job. Uh, UV inkjet also has much higher light fastness, uh, mostly between seven and eight on the blue wool, sky, blue wool scale. Uh, this means that labels can be used outdoors uh, for much longer periods. Uh, with toner, you'd need to use a UV block varnish or laminate to uh, protect from sunlight or just don't print those jobs for outdoor use. Uh, UV inkjet also has a very high color gamut. Typically UV inkjet inks can print up to 75% of the Pantone range, just in CMYK alone. Uh, with the addition of orange and violet, this could increase to over 90%. Again, some toner-based machines struggle to achieve much more than 50% with CMYK only and they rely on using special colors or mixing inks at additional cost, cost uh, to color match. Uh, finally, a UV inkjet can print high opaque white ink, uh, ranging from 70% for some manufacturers to 82% on the digital series HD. I mean, the digital series HD has the highest opacity white available, and it can print that white at the highest speed, 73 meters a minute. So it can achieve results previously only uh, possible using screen printing process. Uh, Toner-based toner machines often struggle with white. Uh, it may need additional layers to achieve opacity and that slows down the press uh, and also increases the costs. Uh, it may introduce problems with cracking also uh, due to the thickness of the fuser toner. Uh, on, on toner-based machines, or white may not even be an option at all with some toner-based machines. Does that answer your question? Yeah, yeah, that's pretty interesting. Thank you for that. Okay. Well, I mean, if, if I, if I uh, look at the Indian perspective, I mean, we have been primarily uh, you know, using Plexo as a technology for label printing. Uh, of course, right now, I mean, we are reaching to that level that slowly that we could see that a lot of interest uh, to know about the digital solutions uh, are coming in. Uh, but uh, one of the questions which comes to my mind that uh, at why digital at, at, uh, for India right now? You know, why, <laughs> why should uh, we look at it? You know, uh, or, or should we just continue with the flex? So why should we look at uh, the digital at this stage? Again, thanks, Gurav. Another good question. Uh, well, you know, I'm amazed. I mean, I've been uh, involved in selling digital presses now for more than 20 years, and uh, uh, it would amaze me if uh, uh, India isn't, uh, you know, developing into digital very, very fast. I mean, there's over 5,000 digital presses now installed worldwide. Uh, and, you know, I know for a fact there is also quite a large number of digital label presses already working in India. So I'd say, why not? You know, uh, the business case for digital label printing has been overwhelmingly proven worldwide and extremely successful. Uh, as we know, digital label printing allows short to medium run lengths to be produced faster with less cost. Uh, if you can sell at the same price as Flexo, then you can more than double your profitability. It's a massive business opportunity if you focus on building your digital sales. And that's important. It's important to have the attitude that the digital press is a, is a new business opportunity for you and not just a, a release valve, uh, just doing the very short runs. You need to build that digital business and then it becomes a massive business opportunity for you. So you'll see massive savings on material waste. It's more eco-friendly. Perhaps in India, uh, you know, the, the skills demanded for uh, to print high quality flexo may be scarce. With digital, less skills are required when uh, they're operating a flexo press, for instance. There's less process steps compared to flexo, easier pre-press, no plate making, no ink mixing, washouts. You know, pretty much a standard 10 minute setup uh, is average uh, and probably no more than 20, 25 meters waste even on a full hybrid machine. I mean, the world is moving into digital uh, uh, digital and uh, label printing is no exception. 
Uh, there are many business opportunities and new markets to developing for digital labels. You know, high added value jobs produce, uh, produced on demand with faster turnarounds. You know, you can get more revenue by doing these higher added value jobs that only digital can produce. Multiversion jobs, uh, this is bread and butter for digital. Often, you know, many manufacturers are producing labels of all different sorts or versions. Uh, with digital, it's just one setup and you can print, change the design without stopping the press. And, you know, uh, as Phil said uh, uh, before, uh, there's almost no crossover uh, with Flexo. You can print unlimited numbers uh, on a digital press and still be cheaper than Flexo because of the high pre-press costs involved in Flexo doing multi-version jobs. Variable data printing. Uh, is, is, is increasing in demand. Sequential numbering, barcoding, security printing. I think all these, the, all these are business opportunities. So I would say for anybody in India now who hasn't already looked at digital, any label printer, they seriously should be looking at it. And I would say uh, learn from maybe some of the mistakes of the early adopters that were looking at perhaps just roll to roll and just focusing on the short uh, uh, runs. Now with you know, a hybrid machine or a machine that you can buy that you can scale up as your business changes, adding finishing, adding flexo uh, if required, you can build your business uh, on a digital press. So I'd say you know, India should start adopting digital as soon as possible. Is that well, okay? Thank you, very much. thank you, thank you very much. Uh, that's pretty interesting and uh, I will not take uh, much of your time, although I still have one more question uh, which is coming up uh, here, which is quite common that what type of jobs should we look at for digital? What type of work is suited and profitable? I know it is a very open question, but if you can add some uh, intel to it, if you can uh, you know, concisely uh, say something about it? Well, I mean, I just mentioned uh, some of the, uh, you know, reasons why, you know, customers in India should look at those added value jobs, you know, the multi-version jobs, vari variable data printing, sequential numbering, barcoding. They're all obvious jobs for digital. But of course, digital can do any type of job. Uh, so, uh, you know, once you've decided what type of digital press uh, you're going to invest in, whether it's a roll-to-roll -roll or a roll-to-roll -roll with, uh, with inline finishing or indeed a full uh, hybrid press, you need to understand what that crossover point uh, with your existing conventional equipment is. Uh, and that's important. So, you know, you will know your own economics on if you've got Flexo or if you've got letterpress machines or whatever processes that you're using, you know what your internal costs are. And once you've got the digital press, you need to understand what the digital costs are and then work out what the, the crossover point is. The crossover point is how many, how many, what's the maximum number of labels I can print at the same price as Flexo and the same price as digital. And that becomes your crossover. So the first thing that you may think of is that any job, uh, once, you know, once you've established uh, uh, that crossover, uh, then most types of work should be suitable for digital printing. Uh, the run length of the job, uh, if the run length of the job is below the crossover point that you've set yourselves, and it's technically possible to print the job, i.e. it's a job that doesn't require, for instance, a metallic ink, of course, if you had a hybrid press, it wouldn't be a problem. You can install a metallic ink on one of the Flexo units and you can print that job. But let's assume, you know, it's a roll to roll press or a roll to roll with inline finishing, then maybe that job couldn't be, it uh, wasn't technically possible to print. So you, you, first of all, if it's below the crossover point, it's technically possible to print, uh, then obviously you should earmark that job for digital. Uh, it, it's interesting to know, you know, that with a digital hybrid press, there should be no job that's technically impossible to produce. If the run lengths are below the crossover point and you sell at the same price per thousand, uh, then your digital profitability will be high. Uh, and it's not uncommon really to see, you know, paybacks below 24 months uh, with a digital hybrid machine. 
Of course, I've mentioned it before, multi-version jobs are the most profitable on digital due to the small pre-press costs. I mean, once you've set the job up, uh, they're all printed in a single run. Uh, compared to Flexo, the cost savings are huge. Uh, and effectively, no matter how long you run, uh, digital will always be faster to produce uh, and lower cost. Uh, the other thing, what will happen, I mean, the, the, the easy answer would be to say, look at that crossover point, look at your existing book of work and move some of that work over. That would release capacity, perhaps, of, of your existing presses. You may have a decision to make. Do I reduce the amount of shifts I'm working? Do I sell one of my conventional presses? Uh, but what we found, actually, uh, in reality, is that once you've got a digital press, it starts to bring in more digital work. So you actually start to attract work. And I think you should target your salespeople or your marketing people to look for work that is absolutely ideal for digital. Look for those short to medium run jobs that sometimes can be problematic and difficult to do, conventional, and build a new portfolio of digital work, offering all those facilities that you can, you know, fast turnarounds, short runs, you know, offer, offer you know, changes to labels that you can do in pre-press. It's not costing you anything in plates. So there's lots of services that you can, you can start to offer. So the answer is, if you have a hybrid, almost any job, providing it's below the crossover, but I would really encourage people to, you know, build a digital business, target their salespeople, go out, bring in more digital work. The fact that you have a digital press will start to attract more work anyway. It's okay. Thank you very much. Yeah, that, that, that sounds good. Yeah. Well, I mean, of course, there are more questions coming up. I would still request that, you know, the email ID which uh, Phil shared, you know, you can, you can send the questions there and we will be prompt to get back to you. Well, uh, the webinar has been interesting and uh, I would like to thank all of you uh, for uh, attending it and uh, you know, I personally think that, well, it is about time we should start looking at digital very closely. Uh, thank you very much. And we will continue to work and serve you. Uh, thank you, Sid. Thank you, Phil. And thank you, Lena. Thank you, everybody. Thank so you, just, everyone. Just before we finish, um, there's a couple of questions in the Q&A. Um, I've answered some of them. There's a few left there. So if the people who sent that, if you could please send that to the digital webinar, I will be able to come back and answer you on those directly. It's just about the lifespan of the head, um, media, so on and so forth. So, um, yeah, if you could just send that into the digital webinar at markandy.com, we'll be able to come back to you. Thank you. Have a great day, Head. Thank you very Thank much. You, everyone. Bye, Thank everybody. Thank you for your attention. Bye. Bye. Thank Bye -bye. you.